Um, so welcome everybody. Um, so as we explained already, this session um, is the first of the CPD webinars. Um, we're really excited to be with you today. It's lovely to hear um, where you're all from and um, introducing yourself. If you haven't done that already, please do pop into the chat and um, introduce yourself. Let us know where you're coming from, your um, job. That would be great, just so we can get to know all of you a little bit better. Um, but um, I, my name is Coral. I'm a learning technology consultant, and obviously, I'm with my friend and colleague Tab today as well. Hi, uh, yeah, delighted to be here with Coral to present this session, and um, look forward to hearing some of your ideas. Uh, it's going to be quite an interactive session. Um, we do encourage you to connect with us um, via Twitter and or LinkedIn. Um, so feel free to add us. I want to just throw out a, a, an interactive question right from the very beginning. Um, and this is maybe a question for the people at Alt, but also potentially for people in the community. So, all oh, right, nice, Sean, not far away. Um, so I want to ask about if there's a suitable hashtag that we could use to tweet about things from this session. Um, it might be good if, if anyone has a suggestion about a good hashtag. We could just hashtag Alt C. And I wonder if there's one about community that we could use as well, um, as that's the kind of focus of the session. Mm. Yeah, Great. if anyone wants to suggest one um, for a community, then please do put a suggestion in and we can we can use that as well. Yeah, but we can definitely hashtag Alt C um, for this. And there's also Alt Learn as well. Christina's put in the, the chat there. So that's great. Uh, yeah, and I'll put my um, Twitter handle in there as well. Oh, thanks, Carl. You've done it. <laughs> great. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Brilliant. Um, great. So yeah, please do at any point if you have any questions or anything, um, please do post them in the chat. And um, we're going to be, um, as Tab said, this is going to be quite an interactive session. So we are going to be having lots of discussion and um, making use of the chat anyway. So um, you'll have time for questions, but we will stay around um, at the end as well in case there's any last minute questions. So. I think we'll just get um, stuck in. Perfect. OK, <clears throat> so the first thing to say is that we are going to be using um, a Padlet wall as part of this session, as part of the interactivity. Um, Tab, could I ask you to pop the link to the Padlet into the chat, if that's all right? Um, but you can also use your phone. And actually, it may be useful if you're working um, on a computer or where you only have one screen rather than opening up in your browser so you're having to switch between the two, you may find it more um, easier to use your phone. Um, and you can use the QR code that's on your screen at the moment, and you can just um, access it there directly uh, using your phone, or you can go onto your phone using the URL, and um, whatever's most comfortable for you um, would be great. So yeah, if you could pop onto that Padlet board, we're going to be using that a few times through the session. And as part of our first task, um, just to kind of warm everyone up, just so we can get a feel for um, your a bit about your personalities, could I ask everyone to go in and just post a GIF um, into the second column of the Padlet board? That would be great. Yeah. Um, and so is I it? Do you want to share your screen, or shall I do it, Coral? No, you do it. Okay. So uh, I will just share my screen and show you how you can post a GIF to the Padlet wall. Just for anyone who isn't familiar, um, if you want to, so a GIF is basically sort of a little animation, a little sort of funny animation. And um, if I just share my screen, you will be able to hopefully see that. Can you tell me when you can see my screen? Yes. Yeah, great. OK. so. When you come onto the Padlet wall, so first of all, you're going to go to the, the link that was in the chat. Um, and then if you go to one of the columns, so in this case, we're going to go to the post a GIF column. And we're going to go to onto the bottom. There's a plus symbol. And when you click, I can see someone's already, already got started. <laughs> if you click the plus symbol, it creates a new little post-it note. And then if you go to the little search thing on the magnifying glass um, and you click on GIFs, you can just type in a search term. So if you want to just type in, for example, team or party or community, let's go with party. So if we type in party, 
you know, we get uh, a few different options for funny gifts that we can post here. See all of my updates from the Padlet wall. <laughs> And you can just click on one of those and it will post it um, in here. And then you just click anywhere on this wooden background and that will actually save it to the Padlet wall. So if I click anywhere here, now it's posted. So we can see we've got an array of, of funny GIFs appearing already. And that gives us a sense already of the, you know, of the flavor of the community that we've got here today. And it just creates a little bit of a sense of fun um, as well. So I'm just going to stop showing my screen, but you can see you can scroll down to see any new posts. So if you scroll down in this column, there's a little scroll thing here as well. You can see anything posted underneath there. OK, great. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Great. OK, so I'll just go back in to sharing our presentation again. And we'll move right along. OK, so, um, you know, just to kind of start us off thinking about why a sense of belonging and building community matters. And I think we all know that um, when you're in a position where you don't feel like you belong to a community you're working with, whether that's in work, whether that's socially, whether that's, um, you know, in, in whatever environment, I want you to think about a time where you've not felt like you belong to part of a community and how that affected how you interacted with that community and how you were engaged with that community because um i think as we all know it can be really really difficult to speak out when you don't feel like you belong to community it can be really difficult to put your opinion across to even engage and have fun with the community when you don't feel like you're part of it so that's why building a sense of belonging in an online space is particularly important because we have a physical distance um, so some might say it's even harder to to be able to create that connection. So it's really, really important that we um, have this the shared um, sense of belonging because it can really help with student engagement um, and learner satisfaction, but also with mental health and well-being, particularly in our current current climate. So it's just something to think about that, that you know, this is really, really important for us to to make sure that we are putting into our courses. And there are lots of different frameworks, lots of different um, research you can do. We've added some additional resources into the Padlet board if you want to do further research. But one that um, found, I found really, really interesting or just um, a great example of why this social aspect, this community aspect is so important is the Community of Inquiry Framework by Garrison. And the idea of this framework is there are three, have to be three things present in order to create a great educational experience. And the first one is teaching presence. So there has to be some form of teaching, not necessarily someone leading you through the course, but you need to have a sense of direction of the course. You need to have a sense of what you're supposed to be doing when you get in there. Cognitive presence, you need to be able to engage with the content, but social presence is just as equally important in these three areas. So it's as equally important that you're able to engage with other people, um, it supports, it sets the, the climate and the, um, the culture of that, that group and that class, but also supports people with their learning and, and moving forward. So that's a really kind of interesting framework to, to think about. And from that framework, um, one thing, actually, I'll just go back just a second, um, from the explanation of social presence, there was a few key things I picked out, um, and those were the ability of participants to one identify with a community of some kind communicate purposefully in a trusting environment develop interpersonal relationships but also protect their own individual personalities and it's those four key things that we like to think about and work on to help us and to give us a base a basis for really putting together this community so those four areas um, then that we want to focus on in today's session are safe space. So obviously in order to belong to somewhere, you need a space to belong to. So creating a safe space for people to belong to. Encouraging a sense of self. So understanding who you are in relation to your own personal identity, but also who you are in relation to the group and the community that you're, that you're working with. Um, language and culture, 
extremely important the language we use how we communicate with students how we design learning so when we're actually designing learning and putting things into place the language that we use and the, the activities we ask people to um, take part in help to to build that culture and the last one is developing community habits so again it's about thinking whether you are I know that there's some people who are educators who are teachers some people technologists all different job types in here um, and whatever your role is um, when working with learners, you can influence all of these things and you have a part in all of these things. So it's, it's really, really important to, to think about these areas. So we're going to go into each of these um, in a little more depth, but first we want to do a little bit of an activity. I'll pass over to Tab for this part. Yeah, sure. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to ask you to spend a couple of minutes to write down as many ideas and responses on paper to the following question. So we want you to grab a piece of paper and a pen. Okay, so if you don't have one right here, um, I'll just give you a moment, get yourself a, a piece of paper and a pen. Um, and when you've got your paper, paper and a pen, we're gonna do a sort of free writing activity. So can I just get a sense, can you just give me a hands up? There's a hand, there's a raise hand uh, button next to the camera icon in the bottom, in the middle of your, should be the bottom of the middle of your screen. If you click, can you just raise your hand if you've done a free writing activity before? Okay, so we've got a few coming through. Okay, so I'm guessing, yeah, there's like about a third of people who have. Yeah, you can put your hands down now. Thank you. Um, so there's about a third of people who have. So free writing is, is basically um, a way of getting as many ideas down as quickly as possible. Okay, and one of the key things about this is you don't edit. You don't stop yourself. You don't edit. You just put down as many ideas as possible. There is no filter for quality, okay? So any idea, no matter how low quality, goes on the page, all right? So we're gonna ask you to write down your ideas, first of all, on a piece of paper. And the question is, what technologies have you used or could you use to help develop, build, to help build communities online? And how would you foster community using these technologies? So we want you to, Put as many ideas down as you can about that. And then um, in a moment, you're going to go over to the Padlet wall and record a short audio description of how you would use those. OK, but I tell you what, let's just do the let's just do the um, writing part first. OK, so we will give you two minutes and I just want you to take a piece of paper, write down as many ideas as you can, thinking about what technologies you've used or could you use to build communities online? So I make it um, 12.47 at the moment. So at about um, 12.49, um, we will come back and I'll show you how to post those things to the Padlet wall. Um, oh, I was going to say, Ruth, do you have a question? Because your hand was up, but I can see you've put it down now, so Great. no problem. Yeah. yeah, if you haven't started already, get your pen moving and just get down as many ideas as you can. We'll give you until 12.50, because it's just gone to 12.48. So if you haven't already, begin now.
OK, so if we can ask you to stop writing, um, don't worry about editing or don't worry about the quality of it. We're not going to ask you to share this with anyone. But what we are going to ask you to do is to, sh is to select one of your ideas, at least one. And we want you to go to the Padlet wall. And we want you to post a little audio clip just talking us through how, what the technology is and how you would use it. And there is an example on the Padlet wall already. Uh, I'm just going to post the link to the Padlet wall in the chat one more time just so that everyone has got that. Um, and I will, I've just posted it in the chat, RW, so you should have it there. Can you see it now? Um, I will now share my screen as well. Great. I will now uh, share my screen as well so you can see that. Let me know when you can see my screen. Yep. Great. OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to task one. And I have put a video here that shows you exactly how to do it. It's just a two minute video that shows you how to do it. But what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down. Um, you're going to come to the bottom and click the little plus symbol down here, as we did before. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you can go to the three dots here. And you're going to go to voice. And you just select the microphone, click allow, and then you can click the record button. And what you're going to do is you're going to tell us what the technology is and how you would use it. So I might say, for example, one thing I think is very useful is um, creating a collaborative document where you can also create a collaborative reading list with your students. So here you could give them the link to the document and then you could actually, as a whole group um, with all of your students, you could actually curate your own reading list and they could contribute their own contributions to it and have maybe little summaries of each um, academic article underneath to help people to find um, reading resources that will be useful to them. And that way it's kind of a more democratic way of doing it. So I'm going to click pause once I've finished. And then I can click playback and save in the top right hand corner. And then I just give it a title. So I might call it using a collaborative document to create a collaborative reading list. Then I click Save. And once I've clicked Save, that will appear on the Padlet wall. It just takes a moment. Yeah. And if I scroll down, you see my recording has, has appeared here. And I just click anywhere on the wooden bit to save it. So now there it is. And I can play it back by clicking the play symbol there. So if we can ask um, everybody to just choose one of their ideas that they generated and just make a little recording. Um, little audio recording under this task one column, just the way I did to so the plus symbol, then the three dots here, and then the audio voice, and then you go from there. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and give you a few moments to record that. And if you have trouble with the audio, obviously feel free to type it as text. That's also fine. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen, give you a moment to do that recording. OK, so I can see some ideas coming through. That's great.
Okay, I'm aware that people might be still recording, but um, if you could try and finish up your recording and then come back, I think we're going to um, keep moving because there are some other things we want to talk about. And we have another task in a little bit as well. So thank you very much for all of those things on the Padlet rule. I'll just give you a moment to finish off and then we will continue. get a quick hands up when you're ready to move on. Okay, I can see there's still a couple of people without their hands up, but I think we will move on if that's okay, because we do have other things to cover. So if you can bring your hands back down again, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so there's some, some lovely ideas already shared on the Padlet wall. Um, some really good stuff that's come through so that's that will be there available to you uh, after this session as well to go through and kind of look at in more detail and listen to um but uh coral shall we move on a little bit yes let's okay um yeah so thank you everybody for your participation in that that was really really interesting and um, there's also lots of really fantastic ideas um coming through in the chat as well so if you don't have the chat open there's there's lots of Kind of really interesting things happening in there as well um, but we'll move on and we'll start working way through those four areas that we spoke about earlier and um, so just to very quickly recap the four areas were safe space sense of self language and culture and developing community habits so um for this part of the session i'm just going to go through each of these areas but please do continue that conversation in the chat let me know if any of these ideas or um, discussions kind of resonate with you or if you want to add anything to the conversation I absolutely encourage you to do that. So starting with safe spaces so as I said earlier a sense of belonging really requires a space to belong to and when we develop learning whether we are um, a learning technologist, an instructional designer, a teacher, educator, a support um, person, whoever you are working with students um, it's really really important that we provide a place for them to basically become a community and collaborate. And I think one of the, the key things is to provide multiple different places. And it's something that we talk about a lot um, is, and you know, I'm sure you've come across as well, is providing choice and providing um, a, a variety of different ways for people to communicate is really, really key because we all communicate in different ways and we're all comfortable communicating in different ways. So it's also about, thinking how can we um, provide a sense of place for individuals as well as a community as a whole. So a lot of tools we've mentioned already and some um, fantastic ones um, in the uh, Padlet wall as well and um, that you can go on and have a look at but some other tools that frequently we use are things like obviously Padlet we're using now um, Tab mentioned using OneNote or a collaborative document of some kind to get students to work together and have a, a space that they can work on things um, together, ask questions, comment, um, things like Miro, um, that's kind of interactive planning whiteboard space. Flipgrid is a fantastic tool. If you haven't used it before, it's like little videos on a um, shared space that people can respond to. Um, Things like your discussion forums, anything you already have, 
at your disposal in your VLE, do not overlook those because I think um, discussion forums are often things that we kind of sometimes forget about, but actually they're so, so powerful, such a powerful tool for us and they can provide a really great safe space. Um, and I think one, one key thing is to think about creating a space or encouraging students to create a space for social interaction only. So I think someone mentioned in the chat earlier, I can't remember who um, without scrolling back, but somebody mentioned that they provided a space for their students that was just a social space or encouraged the students to set up their own social space because that's a really important aspect. Um, and the fact that they can take control of that space themselves. So it's not somewhere that you would go in and ask them to do things as a space that they have control over and they have autonomy over. And that is again, really, really key for having a safe space that they feel like they can discuss things and, and ask questions. Um, one thing that's really, really powerful um, is creating an anonymous space as well. So you've noticed on the Padlet board, um, your responses are actually anonymous. So your names don't come up on Padlet um, for us. So we're not able to see your names. It's an anonymous way for you to interact. Um, and I think having the balance of both, and um, there's something really powerful about providing that anonymous space um, is, is really, really, key because students can get really worried that you know we all feel it sometimes we feel like that we're the only one ever that's going to ask the question or that we're we're the only ones that are unsure but actually you know it's a common thread for all students so having that anonymous space um, and putting the students into smaller groups and someone's just mentioned it Ruth um, Sean sorry has mentioned it in the chat that sometimes putting the students into those breakout rooms they actually communicate more because they feel safer in that smaller space so again, this is all about just thinking, what kind of spaces can I build into the learning and purposefully build them into the learning experience, asking people to actively go in? How can I build in those safe spaces? What can I use and what activities and learning can I make go hand in hand with those particular spaces? Yeah, and I was going to add there, Coral, I think um, yeah. one thing that's really useful is the concept of crowdsourcing. So I think people are probably familiar with this idea of crowdsourcing but if you look at for example any of the biggest digital platforms with the you know the kind of biggest community around them nearly all of them are based on the concept of crowdsourcing so for yeah. example youtube is basically a place for people to share their video the content is all generated by the users and the same with you know um, something like twitter or um, something like facebook so i think by showing students how to create those spaces and setting them up in a way it's that kind of thing you know if you build it they will come if you if you give them a space and you set it up in the right way and you encourage that interaction from the very start that is kind of the key and the community can kind of build itself and i think having that whole community as a class but also maybe having those learning teams or study groups um, allows people to contribute in the kind of bigger community but also in those micro communities where they might feel more comfortable or in breakout rooms in the live sessions as, as Sean mentioned. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, um, Vicky actually um, just asked an interesting question, um, uh, thinking how do we make sure that um, when students have autonomy over the space, that the spaces are inclusive? Um, so I think that's quite interesting. Actually, we're gonna to touch on community standards and community habits in just a second but I wonder if you have a thought on that one as well yeah I mean I think that's a great I think that's a great question uh, and I, I love the idea of giving the autonomy to the students but I think it does need to be done in a somewhat structured way so ideally for example if you get them to set up the group in encourage them to invite you to that group as well and also encourage them if they want to to set up a separate group where they can have private conversation um, but if you're if you're added into the main one that they use then you can kind of monitor a little bit the other thing is i think actually assigning roles to students within that teamwork within that group work and i and i i usually assign at least one student to be in charge of inclusivity within that group so ensuring that everyone has the chance to communicate and ensuring that people aren't being kind of uh, marginalized or discriminated against and actually have one or two members of the group who are responsible for ensuring that everyone is involved and everyone there's a kind of equality of opportunity and experience within that group. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I think one thing that I've found 
really powerful is actually having the discussion with students beforehand and asking them to set the standard for that community. So saying this is, you know, maybe giving them some ideas or a list of things. These are this is how I would like you to communicate. And these are the things that I think are important. But as a group, what do we think are the most important things? How would you like to see people communicate? How would you like to be dealt with as part of that community? And I think you can then bring out all of these discussions and make it really open and honest. Um, and that, I think, really helps. Again, as you said, bring the autonomy to the students and it's up to them to create these standards and and maintain them as well yeah brilliant okay so um i'll move on to the next section so please do you know just keep that discussion coming and um, so the next section is sense of self okay so sense of self sense of self is a really interesting one and i think it's something that's become almost more prevalent over the last year where we've all been at home because I think what you would have had initially was lots of different students from all over the world come into one shared space physically on campus. And sometimes um, you don't get as much of a sense of who that person is and where they're from and their experiences because they're engaged in a different type of community. Whereas when we're all at home, you really get more of a feel for people's own experiences and their self and I think bringing that into your classrooms and building that into if you're building learning materials and actually building the um the idea of personal identity into the learning materials is really really powerful and goes a long way to helping build a sense of identity and um, so just some ideas and things to think about as we've already talked about giving students autonomy and really personalizing learning and that doesn't mean that you need to design individual learning activities for every student. It just means um, trying to provide students with some choice. So that could be, for example, in an assignment, there might be multiple topics. So things, just really simple things like that, where students can use their own understanding, their own experience and their own interests as part of something in the learning materials. And um, giving students roles in class, something that Tab touched on just a second ago, um, but planning learning, which encourages students to actually reflect on their own values, environment and experiences is really, really valuable and interesting. And there's a great resource on the Padlet board, actually, that has a few examples of the types of activities you could use. But it's really just about when you're designing activities, thinking, how can I celebrate students individuality and experience within these materials? Um, and just another couple of ideas, things we've talked about again in the chat, um, allowing students to use things like avatars or images to represent themselves. Um, and something like online journaling and reflection, and again, just encouraging people to really reflect on all of these bigger, wider questions as part of your course can really help connect them with it and connect them with that community too. So yeah, I can see lots of interesting things happening in the chat. Is there anything to pick up on here before you move on to the next one from the chat tab? Well, there is a question about webcams um, and web morning live sessions. And I think that is mm. that is kind of always a, a tricky uh, issue. Um, personally, I think that so I, there is actually a, a meta analysis, a study uh, which. Maybe it's not a meta analysis actually, but it's it's kind of a, a study that looked at uh, a large number of very experienced online educators and and how whether or not they asked students to use webcams and, and what impact that had. And um, what the study found was that nearly all of the most experienced online educators didn't ask students to have their webcams on and found other ways to measure engagement. Um, and they they gave various reasons for not having the webcams on. Um, things like, for example, the the increased demand on bandwidth. So if you have a weak internet connection, having the video on um, makes it very difficult. Um, also, it can be slightly more um, distracting because students are then worrying about their appearance. And also it can add to the level of fatigue because students are thinking about that whilst also trying to follow the learning and participate in the activities. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll put a link to that. Um, on the Padlet wall and also in the chat in a moment. Um, but there aren't actually that many studies on it, so it's hard to say empirically. But my experience, and I've been teaching online for a, about 15 years, um, I would say that uh, I personally don't, I wouldn't require anyone to put their webcam on. 
and actually i often think it's not particularly desirable because i think if you i think it forces you to be a better teacher if you don't have the webcams on because you have to think of more better ways to gather evidence of learning um, Joanna, did you have a question or anything you wanted to add? I noticed you've got your hand up. No. Okay, no problem. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, okay. So I'll move on just to the next one um, before we go on to another activity. No, thanks. OK, no problem. Just wanted to check. Um, OK, so now moving on to language and culture, the next the next part of this, this four part area. So um, the language we use makes a huge difference to the students. So that's not only as a teacher and how you talk to your students and, and how you present yourself to students, but also um, as learning designers, people who are writing the content, the way in which you use language, the way in which you write um, the activities, the things that you ask students to do really makes a difference for how they feel and if they feel part of a community. So just really simple things like using language that um, is relevant to the students. So using like you and we, rather than I've seen a lot of material where people have said like the student will do this. And it's like, it needs to be personal and, and feel human to that student. And it needs to feel like it's part of, um, that it's, it's written for them. I think that's the key thing. Um, often we find, um, particularly in universities, students get a lot of emails and things, generic emails from the university. And I think we often don't realise the effect that can have on particularly distance learners when they're getting emails that sometimes aren't even relevant to them. Because um, they, all they're thinking is, well, this actually wasn't meant for me. And there's often nothing we can do about those because they're from, you know, higher levels and we can't change them. But what we can do is be really purposeful about the language that we use and um, what we say to students and how we put ourselves across. So making sure that we are building in things like icebreakers and inductions can really help with culture and building in those activities really early on. So um, something as simple as the first task we asked you to do where you, um, you know, you put the GIF in the Padlet board, something as simple as, as that as an early introductory activity can be really, really powerful in helping to build a sense of community and also set a tone for the type of culture you want in your classroom. Um, and making communication and collaboration, don't be afraid to have it part of an assessment as well. Even if it's just a very small proportion, getting students to work together um, and designing sort of multiple layers. And again, this comes back to choice lots of different ways for people to engage and participate so learners can have be able to choose a level of interaction so we've got people talking in the chat we've got people we're adding to the padlet board you can um, connect with us on twitter we're providing with multiple different ways of um connecting and discussing and i think that's really really key and one thing not to forget is as well as the language you use imagery that you use in your course is so so important and the imagery you're using and um, making sure that the examples you're providing are diverse um, and sort of well placed but they also are they they celebrate differences they are um create a culture of inclusion and i think that's really key is when we're looking at our materials when we're thinking about what we're teaching what case studies are you using if you're using something like that what imagery is you, are you using what examples are you pulling out and it's really important that we think about making sure that we are making those as inclusive as possible, but also as diverse as possible. Because there's nothing worse than if you come onto a course and you don't see yourself in any of the materials, you don't see an example of you in that particular role or that job or that course. So I think that's that's really, really important. Um, and yeah, inviting kind of examples from students' own experience we've talked about as well. Um, so just going on to the last section before we do another bit of an activity, um, developing community habits. So I think this is something we've, we really touched on all the way through this session already, but things like setting those, sta um, those standards as a shared community we've talked about. So actually saying, you know, what, what, what do we want these standards to be? How would we expect people to interact? Um, but really thinking about having more personal and intimate 
interactions and really building in the interactions and the technology almost isn't quite so important but it's it's using that technology to to really enhance those interactions and um, you know setting activities where, which really encourage students to contribute and discuss in all different kind of ways um, and I think again just touching on varying that communication um, and the different techniques and the different ways so that students one don't get kind of bored using the same thing all the time but that there's lots of different ways so if someone's not so keen on using audio you know we asked you to record a short audio earlier but we did give you the option if you're not able to do that or you don't want to do that you can also write in the text so there's multiple la la layers and multiple levels for how to how to build this type of thing in um, and just to very lastly touch on before we move on teacher presence um, so I think one thing we're probably all aware of is that when we're trying to build a community online, often teacher presence and what, when I say teacher presence, I don't mean that you have to be present 24 seven or that, you know, your teacher, your learning activities have to have lots and lots of teacher presence. I just mean um, that you build in opportunities for um, it to appear as if you are there and that students can see you and um, learn more about you. So things like using introductory videos, um, you know, recording a short video each week to say, welcome, this is what we're going to be doing for this week. And, um, you know, building in regular communication through announcements, for example. And in, in a lot of virtual learning environments, you can pre-schedule your announcements. So you can pre-schedule all of these things in. And, you know, going in and interacting and monitoring in all of these um, communication areas, so in the forums, um, and really providing feedback in multiple different formats. Um, there's a really great study um, that Tab maybe you could put into the chat as well um, on um, the use of voice and the importance of hearing people and hearing voices. Um, it's a really interesting study and I think hearing your tone and your audio is actually really, really powerful. And whether you are someone who's designing learning or a teacher, you can build that in to the learning you're creating. So just having somebody record a very short voiceover to talk through something can be equally as powerful and, and feel connected. Um, and I think that it makes a really, um, it makes a really big difference to the materials. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so let's um, let's have another task quickly before we finish up because I think um, got a bit more to share. So Tab, if you want to talk us through the next task. Yeah, sure. Sorry, I was just trying to get that that study, but I'll post it there in a minute. So um, yeah. yeah, so we don't have very long, but maybe what we'll do is if we put you into breakout rooms and you just you'll just have a couple of minutes to choose either option a or option b and try to put some ideas under that on the padlet wall and you can just type it as text but if when you go into the breakout room if you just have one person share their screen um and that person can make notes for the group and the other people can contribute um verbally or in the chat to that and um, try and add to the list of tools or strategies that have worked well but in with specific relation to either um self and safe space or language, culture and community habits. So if you get the um, pad, it will open and we will assign some breakout rooms quickly. And you'll just have a couple of minutes to contribute to that. So let's see. Okay, so I'm going to set up those groups.
Oh, we're back. Oh, we're being returned. Yeah, so you should be coming back to the main room now. Um, I'm forced back in. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid I had to. In the middle of, your, the middle of your sentence. <laughs> bring everybody back. Um, yeah, but apologies as well. It doesn't seem to give any warning uh, in no. when you when you get brought back. So apologies for that. Um, but I know there's a very short amount of time, but I can see that a couple of things have been posted on the Padlet wall. Um, is there anything specifically that anyone wanted to um, ask or comment on in relation to either of those areas before we wrap up? Yeah, Tim, did you have? Yeah. I think you've got your, your yeah, hand hello, on. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, so uh, I mean, one of the things I, I kind of got in there and I kind of uh, steered it a little bit away from, from the the, the questions you, you'd ask. So one thing that's concerning me at the moment is to do with the nature of being online. It's very yeah. much part of building a network and how the networks are built uh, and how, um, I don't know how we deal with this. Uh, it's the issue to do with first in, you know, if you get first dibs, you, you kind of, you, you, you're all, all automatically have a priority over everyone else and that you're you, you know there it, it's very good for people who feel confident who have the technology who have the network mm. capability just to get straight in and, and do things you know i've got three screens here and i'm i was come i'm struggling to keep up with the pace of uh, of of this webinar and i find that personally i find that and i know speaking to students um as well that they they struggle with that uh yeah. and that it it really does um uh, you know, to do with feeling when you're feeling safe and comfortable in a, in a space, you're not getting those visual cues you'd get in face to face. It does yeah. happen in face to face. You see, you know, the smarter students, the, the quicker students tend to take over. But um, there is space there for the teacher to look around the room and see, oh, you, know, you, you haven't asked the question, so come on, you engage. So that, that doesn't seem to happen online. And I think. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to shut up because I'm re maybe rambling a little bit here. No, I think that's really helpful, Tim. And I, and I, I, think I, I really, I really want to know what other what people do to get over that. Yeah, I do think one key thing is about how we set the etiquette for online and what we expect people to do, and just being really clear about that. Um, and and as I said, sort of assigning roles, and because I think if you're not so confident. Uh, or you're not so confident with the technology, then it helps to have someone who can take leadership of that and steer things a little bit for the rest of the group. Do you want to say anything about that, Coral? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say I, I completely agree. I think um, particularly around when it's a live, so it's a live session like this, for example, and, you know, we put you into breakout rooms and didn't quite have enough time there. But I think, um, yeah, I think setting roles um, is is really really key you can obviously rotate those around so if you have um you know someone if you have multiple students who are pretty good with technology but I think also um you know it, it can be a real problem as you said for people um, to engage and if you don't know people's internet issues and things so having a different way to communicate so um we often talk about just having a collaborative document open and i know it's a really it seems like a really simple thing to have but just having something like a one note open that the the team so you as a group can communicate in but having a space for each student so then you can visually see live in time the people who are writing and the people who aren't engaging in that and um, because I think, as you said, it is difficult when you can't see people's face. Sometimes you're not quite sure. Have they understood the instructions? You know, do they know what they're supposed to be doing? So, again, asking those questions, using things like polling to check that people do understand um, having um, the instructions again, visually on your screen, verbally, you're seeing them, but also posting them into the breakout rooms or wherever you're having them. Um, yeah, I think I think assigning roles, but also having a space so you can visually see the work that people are doing um, it, on an individual level can be can be useful for that. But I'm sure there may be some other um, things in the chat people have said, because I think, you know, this is a fantastic network for sharing ideas. 
Um, I see Sean has mentioned having student digital champions. I think that's a great idea. So particular students who are, who are tech savvy, um, asking them to send, kind of help um, students. Yeah. I mean, I, I think also that there's a role to play for actually, you know, incorporating study skills into into this before. Yeah. Um, Definitely. I, I know a lot of a lot of t uh, teachers have been kind of thrust into this situation, but actually, uh, this is quite this is quite different. It's completely different to what students have been used to in the past. Absolutely. And actually, ha actually knowing how to manage yourself and actually having a space where you can work. Um, mm you know, those kind of time time management issues, space management issues, all of that sort of thing really, really help. Um, and, uh, you know, that's what we're trying to do at uh, Plumpton. We're, we're kind of trying to introduce, well, we're introducing into our CPD, um, you know, guides for students uh, and helping lecturers to kind of, um, you know, uh, develop those skills in their students. I think that's really yeah. helpful, <laughs> definitely. Go on, Carl. Definitely. I think just scaffolding that learning yeah. as well. I mean, um, some mentioned before, and I think this is a great idea, is if you're asking students to engage, um, and obviously they're having to use technology, start small. So, you know, ask them to engage in the chat function using the chat. Can everyone find it once everyone's comfortable with that? Maybe another week you ask them to then, you know, we asked you to record a short audio, for example, that could be quite advanced for a lot of students. So it's about kind of scaffolding that as well and, and building it in over time, I think, is is really useful. Um, and exactly as you said, building in study skills, I think um, digital literacy skills particularly, I think is almost has to, you know, it's key, absolutely key um, to us working online. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and I think you know, one thing I try to do, like, for example, with the Loom video on the Padlet wall, is like if you're asking people to do things that require a certain digital skill, make a little kind of video showing them how to do it or um, don't kind of expect them to kind of figure it out for themselves. And I think asking the students what they think the most effective way to manage the community and what they think the most effective way to manage the online learning is, is, is really powerful as well. And especially giving them a mixture of non-anonymous and anonymous spaces in which to do that because if they have an anonymous space it means they really can say if they feel like they're not included they can say that and they can say what would be a better way of of running it and i think only by harnessing that collective intelligence and collective knowledge of study and and you know online interaction and communities can we really you know build something that is accessible for everybody and um, you know, kind of, I guess, democratic in the way that it's made up, um, or at least egalitarian in, in its values. So I think that's something we should strive for and try and make it a co-created community um, rather mm. than the responsibility being all on the teacher, because that's that's hard, right? I'm, I mean, can I, can I just say, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to feel as I'm taking over a bit. But um, the, uh, the, uh, those lecturers that I've spoken to about this, those are the, who actually engage their students in face-to-face, um, -face, showing them how to use the, the resources uh, in the classroom uh, and uh, were able to talk them through any issues they had, uh, have done better, have, have actually had better engagement later on, uh, had a better community. Um, and those who have done, who seem to be doing worse, from those that I've spoken to, well, are those who are running, this is in FE, doing maths and English uh, classes mm -hmm. and um, just being dropped into them uh, with students I'd never met. Uh, and they, they seem to be having the most uh, problems. So it, I think face-to-face -face is important when you can get it. And that's, that's of course, is a, is a problem at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, I think if if it's possible to build in live sessions, you know, like this, a, a live session, um, it, I think that that is really valuable. Um, but as Tab said, there, you can, if you aren't able to do that for whatever reason, and there's, I guess, there's lots of reasons that that might not happen. Um, you know, recording bits of audio, recording video, so students are still connected and seeing your face. It's not the same, but it goes it goes in some way to to helping to explain things. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, I know um, someone mentioned in the chat about having a pre-learning week, a sort of induction week. And one thing that um, may be useful is to speak, you know, to your institutions that you work with, because um, 
we've worked with a couple of institutions who have introduced that um, and it's almost um, it's like the induction week but rather than it just being um, a kind of student support led thing and um, their teacher the academics get involved in that week and um, it's not learning as in it's nothing to do with the course particularly but it's just about building that community and also working through those technical <laughs> bugs and technical issues and um, so if that's something you can do I think that is really useful and um, but it may be that someone on your team or if a learning technologist if you're working with one they may be able to put together some sort of pack or something that could be sent to students before they start um, you know obviously all of this is in in an ideal world isn't it but um, there may be something that can be sent pre the students arriving that again just starts to help with some of those study skills and and tech issues but I would almost just be aware in that first teaching week first few weeks where possible to keep it lighter and then build build on that if that's possible although I know it isn't always <laughs> great okay so I know we're um now running running a bit over so um we will be coming to the end of the session. I'm happy to stay for a few minutes longer if anyone's got any other questions or, or comments. Um, happy to happy to hear from you. Um, and of course, the Padlet board um, will be available all the time. So you can go back to that, you can get ideas from that and um, continue the discussions there as well. Uh, I'd like to offer just some um, food for thought uh, before you sure. finish. There's uh, so much there's this great conversations going on about um, asking the community to so going back to the students, how do you think this should be run? What do you think we should be doing? I encourage all of that. But I think it's worth taking a moment to step back and, and think actually, sometimes the teacher isn't always an IT expert and actually mm. the teacher can be feeling quite overwhelmed by the situation. So it's okay as an educator, I think, to, to rather than open, ask an open question, uh, offer, offer selections. So, you know, um, which platform would you like us to use? Teams, Zoom, or or Flipkart, yeah. whatever. You know, so, so that you're you're maintaining some structure as the educator, so that you don't get you know everyone saying, oh, "I really want to do this," and you go, "But I don't know how to do that." Yeah, I, I I totally agree. I think that that's absolutely key. You can you know you can make it open, but also have that level of structure so I think even if you're giving students a choice of two things and actually I wouldn't necessarily worry about giving them a choice of which technology to use because I think first and foremost you as a teacher have to be comfortable with the technology and um, so if you are most comfortable with teams I would use teams but it's just about trying to give um trying to give choice in other ways around activities or ways of engagement and things um but I, I and I completely I completely understand I think we can get a bit overwhelmed and we don't want to just throw hundreds of technologies at the problem because that's not you know that's not going to help either yeah that's a really good point Tab have you got anything to add to that are you still there Yeah, sorry, I just was going to say that um, I think make the most of support that is available to you. Mm. So, you know, your institution should have some kind of support for technology. It shouldn't be expected that teaching staff should have to figure all this out by themselves. So you should have some kind of either a technology enhanced learning team or an IT team. Um, that can support you in how you use the technology or some kind of digital champion if you don't then you should speak to the management in your organization and suggest that that's something that is needed um and something you know coral and myself are both le learning technology consultants and this is something that we do is work with different institutions to help improve these different areas and as we've discovered today there aren't always simple answers to these problems they do need experience and expertise to help guide you through some of these difficult areas so if that's something that you'd be interested in obviously you can um, get in touch with us and we can work with your institution or we can just suggest ways that you can use the resources already in your institution um, you know to to make your, your life easier as a teacher because ultimately um, teaching is is hard work and you know 
when you have to do it online, there's all those extra considerations. So the more we can help each other, the better, really. Um, one final thing is um, we've got a feedback form for the session. Would you like me to share that in the chat, Coral? I'm going to just post it here. So we've got a form which you can um, provide us with some feedback that would be really helpful. Um, and just to say again, thank you very much for your participation and for all the great ideas. Um, there's a lot of food for thought. And please, uh, you know, save the link to the Padlet wall because there's lots of useful ideas on there. And um, yeah, we hope that you know, you can manage to build really effective communities with your students and colleagues, um, you know, in, in this online space. Yes, thank you so much, everybody, for your participation.